Uh, so today we are looking at how we can infuse uh, physical literacy into a summer camp environment. Um, so my expertise is around physical literacy and doing that in a dry land. And I work with our aquatics team to develop programming that can take skills from the land into the water and then enhance students' comfort into how they explore the water environment um, and make sure that it's fun and inclusive. Has anyone seen the dip, dive, and glide resource from Everact to Schools? Have you used it yet? I haven't used it, but my staff does. Yeah. So we're going to just talk a little bit about how you can use this or how you can use this to have more ideas. Um, so if you, you'll notice in the glide cards that there's a page that goes over general fundamental movement skills, okay? We're in the aquatic environment, what kind of skills are we building there? Diving, submersion, if it's shallow enough that they can, maybe if they can't do a full swim or dive, that they can, they can paddle through the water or skull. Streamlining. Streamlining, yeah. Yeah, blowing bubbles, gliding. Good. Okay, so we're going to take a different game that works well today because we don't have too busy pool, but this space is something you want to consider for. And this game is called Fling That Fish. Okay, has anyone ever played Chuck the Chicken? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna take Chuck the Chicken and put it in the pool, okay? Um, so those of you, is anyone not familiar with the rules of Chuck the Chicken or Fling That Fish? I don't know if I have, like, I Okay, know. okay, so we need two groups of four, so you can just go how you naturally are, okay? And I'm gonna grab uh, weights, but it's gonna be our fish, okay? So one group is gonna start with our fish, that you're gonna throw somewhere in the pool. But because we wanna be respectful of the other people in the pool, we're gonna throw it in this space where we're using, okay? So do you wanna start with the fish? So this group is going to throw it into the pool in this area where we're playing, and she's gonna say, fling that fish. When she does that, you guys are going to run to get it. While they're waiting to get it, you're gonna get really tight in a circle, and you're gonna swim and count how many times you swim around your group. Okay, it could be water running if you're more comfortable with that. You guys are going to go collect it and you're going to go over, under, over, under till it gets to the last person who's then going to fling that fish. And then you guys are going to get in a tight circle and see how many times you're going to go. For today, we'll do four rounds and we'll see what the score is. One person goes around the outside. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? Let's, let's, do, let's do a practice round. Okay. Okay, they got two. Whoa, Heidi in this space. <laughs> okay, last one, see how many you can get. Okay, that's good, that's good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what's a skill that you do on land that we now have brought into the water? Running through water. Running through water. Throwing. Throwing, yeah. So if we are, we're doing a focus of, for the skill of throwing, it's a neat game to take into the pool where now you're thinking about your buoyancy, you're paying attention to how you're moving in the water. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a deep breath of air and then we're gonna try and get to the bottom of the pool. Okay, so just keep it happening. Okay, all right, so yeah, so we're gonna take a deep breath in and we're just gonna try and float down to the bottom. Okay, let's give it a try, ready? My hair's dry. Okay, so what was easier? 
with, with uh, to stay down there a lot with the, with the blowing the bubbles out. Okay. Yeah, because our lungs act like a big balloon. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It can help us float. Okay. All right. Now, let's try, let's try um, getting our feet up off the bottom of the pool. And we're going to try and keep our, um, our body in a nice tight ball. Okay, so we can, so we can keep our lungs inflated, but a nice, a nice tight ball on top of the water. Let's try that. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's try spreading out our body nice and wide now and see what happens, okay? So we can try with our face in or on our back. Maybe try a different, a different kind of way. So nice and wide.
so we're going to play a game now to explore uh, buoyancy in the water a little bit differently and that's a little and add some fun into it. Um, so you all are going to need a flutterboard, okay? And this game is called uh, Sharks and Crocodiles, okay? So and I need two people that are going to volunteer to be sharks. Oh. Okay, shark. Okay, Heidi's a shark <laughs> and I, I Coral. and Coral will be a shark. Okay, so if you're a shark, you're going to swim with the flutter board above your head. You're, uh, so it's like your fin in the air, okay? Um, if you are a crocodile, which everyone else will be, you're gonna put the flutter board on your belly and you're gonna float and skull around the pool, okay? So if a shark, if a shark tags a crocodile, you're gonna flip spaces. So then that crocodile becomes a shark and the shark becomes a crocodile. Like a normal fin or like this? Uh, like a fin. So you can identify them. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So crocodiles you can spread out and then. You're going to try to tag the crocodiles. If you get tagged crocodiles, you become a shark and the shark becomes a crocodile. Three two, one, and the sharks are coming to get the crocodiles. So now you're a crocodile, Heidi, and you are a shark. Coral, go get her. Uh-oh, Krista is now a shark. Uh-oh, we've got two new sharks. Okay, you guys can bring it in and we'll, I don't think we need, and I'll grab your flutter boards. Yeah, so I think what I like about, this is what started happening once the game started going. You started doggy paddling, okay. What about, were you laughing? Yeah. It was kind of fun? Yeah, so if you have a participant that's a little bit fearful of the water, now we've added a flotation device. Okay, they don't, they, the, whether they're, they can choose how they're gonna be a shark maybe, like maybe they use it closer to them, maybe they put it farther away. Um, so it gives them that comfort level. And then the distraction of playing the game where it's everyone sort of, it's not one focus on one person that's tagging, it's everyone playing together. Um, gives them a little opportunity to explore a little bit on their own and then also explore their buoyancy with the flutter board in a way that's a little bit more secure. So uh, sometimes, get into a situation where you have to take, like hopefully this doesn't happen all that often, but what if you have to take the kids in deep water initially without this warm up period? What do we do? Throw them in. Just throw them in. <laughs> See, think it works sometimes. Think or swim <laughs> methods. No. Uh, no. Yep. We gotta, no. So what do we, the main thing that will even the playing field in deep water, if we do have to take the whole group in, um, is a life jacket or a flotation device of some kind, right? Now, um, so uh, the, thing, the thing is, is that kids in groups will not necessarily tell you if they are scared of the water. They will sometimes go along with everyone else. So, okay, because they don't want to be embarrassed in front of their friends. They don't want to say, oh, I'm scared of deep water. Okay, and then what happens? <laughs> yeah, possible drowning, right? So, we want no, to I meant turn. other kids make fun of them. Well, uh, if they say you know. it. I, thought I okay. misunderstood your question. Yeah, that's okay. So, like, yeah, so they might make fun of, um, they might make fun of the other child. Like, that's what the child that's, you know, said in my, in his head, he's going, I don't want to go in deep water. I think I'm going to just say that I have a stomachache right now because I don't want to go in. Or, you know, like, fear, fear instant. So, um, but 
what if we do have to do that? And so I think that maybe what we'll do now is where everyone's going to get a flotation device of some kind. Now, light jackets are great, but I don't think we have any very many adult ones, so we're going to use these. And these, these work pretty good too. Some kids, though, you'll say, hey, does anybody want to have a noodle and a life jacket? And then they'll, or some barbells, these are good too. But say, say we start out, everybody has a flotation device in the evening. All right. They're only doing deep water activities, okay? And that can be a real tricky thing, right? Um, it's actually a super big deal for kids to jump into deep water. It's a big deal for kids to when just learning to, to jump into shallow water, for that matter, right? So when we get into the water, we want to always do, we can keep our stuff on the side or we can have it under our hips. Okay? And so we just do a slip in entry on the side. So we slip in and hold on to the wall first. Okay? So slipping in and holding on to the wall is the safest way. In that way, even kids that are uncomfortable can do a few different things. Okay, let's try doing a little bit of floating against the wall. Okay? Or let's do some bubble blow. Can anyone put their faces in the water? How deep do you think you can put your toes down on the side of the, the side of the edge? <laughs> All right. Awesome. Does anyone want to try a float with holding onto the wall? Pretend well. Oh, sorry. That's okay. That's okay. All right. And then once you're tr you've done it, you've tried doing a float holding onto the wall. Then you can try doing a float with your flotation devices away from the wall. <laughs> okay, back to the view of this. All right. Okay, good. And then once you start seeing kids that are they're starting to get a little more comfortable, uh, you know, encourage them to take their time. You know, they don't have to move away from the wall or, you know, but the kids that are more comfortable will already. It's really easy to figure out, okay? And then you can just stay and do some very encouraging, like, okay, let's try blowing bubbles, or let's try, you know, or do you want to have a life jacket, maybe? That might make you feel better. So, um, okay, does anyone have anything to add to that with any kind of experience that you've had taking kids in deep water? Has anyone had, a, had that happen where you didn't yeah. have any shallow at all and you had to take them all in deep? I just generally though when you're sliding in yeah. and holding on, make sure you tell them that's for sliding in. Yeah. So if they get into the habit of doing that, when they jump in, they'll jump, turn around, try to grab it. Yeah, and yeah. Like, yeah, that's for sure. Like that's dangerous right yeah. there. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Um, but yeah, you're right. Like this is an entry. I, I've seen into the kids pool. like hit their forehead, like hit their chin on. It's the it's the pool. not fun. No, you're right. But um, generally, like slipping in is the most most kind of like easiest way to get in. And then, of course, you start getting progression towards jumping and playing, and we can play tag down here, and any game you can play in the shallow, and you can almost play in the defense. So, yeah, once they get everybody moving. Um, I think the point of today was around reminding ourselves that if you are really comfortable in the water, that you started somewhere first, and knowing that in those summer camp environments, you're going to have multiple uh, skill levels. So considering different comfort levels and then finding ways to infuse games and different movement skills to make it fun and uh, build on things they might have learned in other environments outside of the water.